coming home, I reared 4,000 pheasants. I land 800 breeding views. And anything gun related on Instagram or Facebook is like a big no no yeah, thing like yeah. that. I mean, I think we're rolling at about 10,000 likes and, and that right? thousands of views. And that on the door, I said, mate, I hate, hate to uh, come to you with this, but is this what I'm looking for? So we're live and we are back with another episode. And uh, another very good friend of mine, um, Mr. Ben Hughes. Husey, how are you? How are you, mate? I'm well. Thanks for joining us. That's all right. I had yeah. to go like a bat out of hell to get here. It's hard to get a slot in your diary, Mister Worldwide. You know, celebrity status, not the blue tick man on Instagram, nonetheless. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, you can buy them. I was now. just about to say you, you can, can buy, them. buy them. <laughs> you can, and there is a way of seeing if people have bought them. Those three little dots. Click on that. If it was after like August twenty three that's bought they won't how, give them how do you get a blue tick oh because i'm know, the technology dinosaur of this pod verification apparently you get well, verified yeah. um as, well, as being that person right basically. it's celebrity um, status and we are do you not have a blue tick oh mate absolutely you not. will have a blue tick he's got crofty tick. will have a blue you tick. will the lordship <laughs> i don't know i've got like an x <laughs> <laughs> a red x a black x yeah exactly <laughs> yeah. funny enough they wrote to me the other day did instagram because I put a picture of a pair of guns, my shotguns on. I've just had restocked. Ah, uh, yeah, you can't do that. And they're all getting very funny about this. Now, yeah, not yeah, all yeah, I yeah. did was say, look at these lovely stocks, you know, on the new toys. That was the schoolboy era of the century when I launched Tweedle. Very naively started putting, win this pair of guns on yeah. Tweedle. And now I am banned from running adverts, which I desperately need to promote my business. So, Is that right? Yeah. So you and can't do that then? Can't, 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 any, anything gun related on Instagram or Facebook is like a big no no. Yeah. Joe, how and daft is this? If you put in the description, f uh, in inverted commas, fake gun, it's acceptable. Because you're telling Facebook it's a, it's it's, a, it's a water it's pistol a, for all yeah, they know. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. Dialogue, yeah, like it is a massive it's, problem. And it's, it's actually a topic I'm, that we should get on to. I was going to say, yeah. Well, yeah. There's I nothing mean, illegal about... Touching on it briefly now, it's just there isn't anything. Everyone's a license holder in the UK. Yeah. And I don't know why we... Um, you want this a bit closer? A bit closer, sir. Come okay, on, play sorry, the game. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> um, I don't know why in the UK it's such a problem when posting guns. And you can actually, um, I forget what terminology the uh, the social media guys give it, but you get, um, you get sort of like put into this category where you can't be searched by the general public. They have to type in your whole name right. to find you type yeah. thing. Um, which I think they call it like ghosted or shadow 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 ban shadow ban yeah. yeah exactly so you can be found but it, it takes a lot more doing um, so yeah it's just a bit weird I don't really understand but what about it. game shooting can you can you uh, it, 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 again are they pretty strict on that as well there's there's, there's you can there's post politics. it um, but I if, if you were posting about roses and gardening a lot of other people would, would discover that post if I post about a video of the picture of me and you smiling like hell, yeah. shooting that pheasant at brigands. Yeah, yeah. I shot Only it. Not you. Yeah. I shot the pheasant. I, I heard it was yeah. the bat gun. <laughs> yeah. And it was all yeah, and very the bat gun was Mark Windsor, by the way. So there's <laughs> yeah. a high probability yeah. that it was a bat gun. And it was yeah. all excellent acting. That, on that, that part, was his story, actually. Yeah, it was, yeah. But it did look like I but, shot it. I know. It was amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. Amazing. But yeah, that just wouldn't get the reach that you uh, would want it to. I uh, did a video of a drive going on when we were at Duncan Park yeah. a couple of years ago, and I just put it on. It was literally, my dad was loading for me, and, and I put it on, and he just sort of filmed, and, and all it was was the pheasants flying over gully. You did, didn't see anything dying or anything like that. No. I just put it on thinking it was funny. Got 280,000 views. Flipping it. It's amazing, isn't it? It just but went, but... And I don't know, that never got caught. It never got caught up in this hole. Through the net. I think it must have just slipped through the it, net. It's it was mad, amazing. Isn't it? It's scary. I've actually got a video on Facebook which has. Can we talk about this? This is a family show. Yes, <laughs> yes, you can. Yeah, you can. It's Absolutely. not that video then. No, it's not. You were going to bring up that video <laughs> later, weren't you? <laughs> I'm now worried because <laughs> he knows a lot about me and I'm pretty worried about this. I oh, know. Um, no, but I, I posted one of just a drive going on at Brimsfield this yeah. season and it got some absolutely ridiculous. It was a normal generic post of a drive yeah. going on and I thought maybe, you know, we'll get 150 likes, something yeah. like yeah. that. I mean, I think we're rolling at about 10,000 likes and, and that right? thousands of views. And that was just to <clears throat> sort of like publicize that we will have our book opening for 
for this coming season, the 24, yeah. 25 yeah. season. And it just went mad. And, and a lot of that was overseas people making it go crazy. Yeah. And, and, you know, you go into America and their, their rules of Facebook engagements are completely different. To oh, what yeah, of course. Are, so are, what they're allowed to... Shooting I mean, hogs out of a helicopter. <laughs> yeah. Mate, I want to go when I next go to America is on the snowies. Oh my God! Snow, the snow geese. The snow geese. Yeah. I need to line in the coffins and coming out the. Yes. Yeah, I did it yeah, in Canada. Just like a snowman. Yeah. And yeah. just pop out. I did it in Canada. I was out there for a shooting competition. These guys said, uh, "Oh, Rob, do you want to come and shoot geese?" I was like, "Yeah, it sounds like fun." And literally just line in a coffin. You're hearing this noise. The These only, geese the coming in. And you're like going. And literally, I waited for the guy next to me in a coffin, and then you flip open the lid Heart's and pop pounding. up and sort of, yeah, oh my God. If you've got the proper coffins, you pull a lever and it just oh, do like you? Oh, no, this was you a up, yeah. and you're there with your Nelly, Nelly 12 shot or something, and, just, and, and you just pop away. Man, um, brilliant. That looks mega. That looks um, mega. So we're going on a massive tangent, which is great, but yeah. to those that have never met Ben, Mr. Brewing Game Supplies, um, and the host now and sort of Lee of Brimsville Park, would that be true? That would be. Um, shot extraordinaire. And uh, how's all that going for you, Ben? And first and foremost, let's go from the start. So Family Farm in the Cotswolds, which has become Brewing Game Supplies. Tell us a bit more about that. How's that happened? Uh, well, I, I actually started out, I, I sort of left college, Harper College, walked straight into a sort of trainee position, I suppose, next door to which the doors kind of just started opening for me there um, with the keeper leaving halfway through the season and I then progressed. It's and always I did ideal. A, yeah, really good. Um, I did a few seasons there as a keeper and um, the estate started to downsize and it was sort of like w one, one of the two keepers was going and I volunteered. I said, I'm, I'm happy to go. And I then sat at home for sort of like a season because we, we had got a, a sort of small family sort of shoot and I mean when I say small I thought I was a hell of a boy at the age of 15 selling a 25 bird day <laughs> like, yeah. we were chasing five up a hedgerow type thing yeah. so um yeah I thought I was the boy so then when I progressed into a proper keepering job and, and it was fully private do it in, and I, I believe we were sort of like one of the biggest privately in the in the Cotswolds was really cool and it was a lovely place to work and it's it's very fond memories what was that called? Uh, that was Guys and Grange Estate. Guys so and Grange. That is next door to home. And there's some incredibly fond memories of the estate. And, and actually, um, Temple Guiting side of this, the estate was sort of where I grew up um, helping the local keeper. Um, and that all got incorporated into the estate when it was sold. So um, really fond memories of that place. Sort of came home at the ripe old age of 21, wondering what the hell I was going to do next. Um, and the shoot had progressed and got a little bit bigger. And when I was at college, I had started rearing sort of 500 to 1,000 birds and putting those out on the shoot. And we were doing 400 bird days at this point. And then we got bigger and I got came home and I lambed, I think on the first year of coming home, I reared 4,000 pheasants. I lambed 800 breeding ewes. Um, because my father wasn't very well that year. So it was a sort of blessing in disguise, if you like, yeah. that I came home. Chuck you in at the deep end at the same time? Um, pretty good at lambing sheep, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> um, helps having ridiculously big hands. Um, you know what they say about big hands? Small feet? Small feet. <laughs> I have. Size nice. Yeah. Um, so it just sort of progressed. And I, I, I wasn't happy with what I had got basically um, and wanted to come become bigger within the shoot. So then I started rearing more to when I was sort of 23, 24, the option of buying um, what was Brew and Abbey Game Supplies came about and um, went and had a bit of a chat with dad and said, listen, like this is how much money I've got personally to invest. Um, would you help me out with a little bit more that I need to, to, to sort of finalize this deal. And he said, oh, I think it's a bit too much money to be throwing at a business and, you know, this and that. And I said, no, 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 Dad, I, I believe that I can make a go of it. Yeah. And in hindsight, my father was right. It was way <laughs> too much money we paid for the business. Yeah. Don't you just uh, love it when that happens? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Like you're paying for a book where um, 
the guy who he bought it off, unfortunately, he he did us a little bit because the books were a bit diddled and uh, everything else was. Uh, and I'm I'm fine with talking about this because uh, he carried on selling um, in in the time when he shouldn't have. Yeah. Um, so we were up against it from the start, and seven seven years on, I now, I now think I am. And, and that was brewing game supplies that you bought. The, yeah, na the correct, name, yeah. the business, exactly. the contact. I bought, I bought that at the ripe old age of sort of 23, 24. And how many are you doing now, Ben? Are you um, we're rearing just shy a quarter of a million. Have you? Well? Um, and we're running between 90 and 100 shoot days. Yeah. Uh, which and that's our shoot Partridge. days are a little bit bigger than 25 bird days now. We're yeah, uh, yeah. sort of minimum, at Brimsfield, got it, yeah. minimum of 300, really. Yeah. Uh, it's a fantastic shoot, isn't it? Brimsfield's great. Yeah. Um, home's lovely. Home's like... How's home different? I don't know home. How's I've home? never shot home. Either. No. Um, <laughs> that was a real good drop in there. Like, I've never shot home, <laughs> yeah. Ben. Yeah. Yeah. Please, can I come, okay. Ben? To come? Yeah. 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 I've, shot I've that, ben. had <clears throat> subtle sort of like hints for invites, but, <laughs> yeah, that, but that was has shocking. got to be the worst <laughs> one yet. He did that. I did he, it with, with did Richard that, as well. Yeah. For Bullen. Yeah. 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 I've yeah. never been to Bullen. Yeah. Yeah. never done Bullen. Yeah. Um, actually, quite luckily, Olivia, going off topic a little bit, she was, uh, Olivia's my other half, she was in Exmoor, um, drag hunting. And... Uh, they um, they were in a pub and there was an auction lot and it was a bull and peg was auction it? lot. So I was on the blower saying to Olivia, listen, you um, don't put your hand up until I tell you. And I got it at such a great rate. <laughs> and Did you? Ran Crofty. Have said, you been yet? No, no. Oh, it's, it's magnificent. Oh, Ran right. Crofty said... Uh, I'll see you on the farmer's day. <laughs> he, he was not amused that I was going to be on, on that farmer's That's day. Brilliant. So that would be really fun. Yeah. Um, but yeah, going back to how home is um, different to, to Brimsfield, home's like my baby. Home, home is basically a plot of land which 95% um, of it is our own, a little bit of rented ground. And all that I've done is basically we've now got no sheep because we've got no ground for sheep because every field has got yeah. a game cover in or yeah. a, an overwinter How mix. big is it? Pardon? How big is it? We're only about 600 acres. Right. Um, and that's the one with the quarry drive, yeah? Correct. The yeah, famous so quarry drive. Very, very lucky that my... Near Brimsfield, is it, Ben? I don't... We're, we're 25, 30 yeah. minutes from Brimsfield, yeah, so okay. really nice for me to manage. 45, 50 minutes from Brimsfield. No, it's not. Yes, That's it the way you drive. <laughs> hey, I've followed you many yeah, times. I, I know, route. but I had to drive steady with you behind. Yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't want didn't want to lose. Because I've, I've not got a V eight, unlike some. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, so um, so yeah, we're we're sort of thirty minutes away. Yeah. Um, so managing it is nice, um, but we have all the rearing field back at home because my office is at home. So yeah. it's yeah. quite quite nice to Fantastic. have that. Um, so yeah, home's just a little bit different. I mean, it's just a, a collaboration of um, game cover crops. Uh, not many woodlands, but partridge and pheasant. Partridge and pheasant, yeah. and I, I put a few duck there as well, yeah. and they're they're really good fun too. Um, and it's just yeah, loads of my sort of ideas, and it takes a year or two to get them right each drive. But it's just a, a collaboration of all my ideas bundled into one and go, okay, that didn't work last year. How can we change that a little bit to make that a little bit better? Um, so now we've got a drive also called Reservoir, which comes off a bit of banking. And it's as, in, in my eyes, on, it, on, on its day, it's as good as what the quarry is. And with the quarry, my grandfather dug a bloody deep hole, God rest him, when he was alive. And, and it's even deeper now. Um, it's sort of like 45 meters where we kick them off. Yeah, um, and that's pheasant and partridge. Yeah, uh, and they are yeah, pretty top notch. You've got to use the terrain, and that's using it wisely, isn't that's, it? Um, yeah, yeah, it is. Um, so yeah, we we obviously are very health and safety cautious. So try and shoot that on a weekend, um, and yeah, we have our risk assessments done and yeah. bits and pieces, which PR we, we train have to do. Told you, yeah, Been on BBC this lot. Of course, yes, he knows yeah. exactly what to say. Yeah, I PR come out. beforehand, mate. PR beforehand. <laughs> I've had the briefing coming down, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. And how's Brimsfield going? How long have you had it now? Brimsfield has been on the books for a ripe, ripe old time of about ooh, 10 months. Yeah. Um, so within those 10 months, we've done 52 shoot days. It's amazing. 
Uh, and they've gone really well. I know we've had a few days and they've loved it. Absolutely yeah, well, loved well, it. Well, they've rebooked. Yeah, that's that, brilliant. Like, I've not that's opened, all you can ask for. Yeah, exactly. I've not opened the book because my end of year doesn't actually finish um, until the 31st of March. Yeah. So I will happily take the bookings, but I'm not doing much more than that. Yeah. And um, yeah, EJ Churchill are in the laptop, in the spreadsheet, ready to go a couple of times. Yeah, that's um, good. So the girls are constantly on the phone, so that's great. Yeah, good. Um, and we'll probably have the Tweedle Day there yeah, again. Yeah, it went well. Um, which, am I right in saying it was the quickest ever selling Tweedle? We'll give it you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For the purpose of the podcast, I'll give it you. No, 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 no. no. It went well, man. I'm yeah. not happy with that. It went just well. Just for the purpose of this. Do the best, <laughs> do shoot days go the best of anything? Uh, cartridges and cartridge guns and shoot days, yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because, yeah. And also, with the shoot days, they'll be happening. I put them on like two or three weeks before. Yeah. So it's something to look forward to, but you look forward to it within a week or so. Yeah. And it can yeah. happen tomorrow. Yeah, that's what you want no, to say. Really dragging well. on forever, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so going back to the blue tick and going back to the uh, the, the famous Ben Hughes, you you've had a bit of a, a bit of a story, haven't you? Really, mate, a bit of a a twist in the yeah a twist in I life that, that led you on to BBC. Yeah, exactly. So um, a year a year after buying the business, um, my younger brother, who um, he doesn't like the title, but he went on to um, a TV program where it's a dating show. <laughs> um, and it includes what, an I- it includes an <laughs> island you, and you two are too to re- <laughs> all you three are too young to remember blind days aren't no. you? <laughs> can you remember it <laughs> no. I, ca- I can Jesus, wasn't it Silla so Black Silla Black yeah. oh yeah of course, I, yeah. of course, of course. Oh, God, you're sad. yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I'm so I, I showing think my there's age actually, there's actually like a re constructed version of that just yeah. come back out yeah. or something. I don't know, I don't think they used to shag on, on Blind Day. No, they, they, no, they, no, <laughs> there's none of that going on in the old days so. on ITV. Ben's, you know. Ben's brother um, went on a bit more of a feral version yeah, of, yeah, that, yeah. of Blind Day. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So um, he, he went and did that and um, off the back of that had to do some bits for TV and one of which he got asked to do was um, was to go and have a live examination on this morning um, which he went and did and sort of went off early one morning and I remember the day vividly went off early one morning we were both living at home at the time because my house was being built and I believe Chris was between relationships ironically and um, came back home really late that night and I I was I suppose a bit like a mother hen um, waiting up to make sure I heard him come through the door type thing and he, I heard him go across the land and I said, shouted to him, well done, because we'd actually run a shoot day that day that he was doing it and after I'd finished with the team, Dad said, you've got to sit down and watch your brother on this morning having his live examination. I was like, not really too sure that I want to see him get his tackle out, but what, he, what he's doing is, is really amazing, good. Yeah. 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 And, um, and anyway, something in the back of my mind, not sure quite what it was, um, but I checked myself that night in lead in bed and sort of wandered into Chris's room and tapped on the door. I said, mate, I hate, hate to uh, come to you with this, but is this what I'm looking for? He was like, Ben, and excuse my language, it's fucking 3 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> this can wait till the morning. <laughs> uh, I am absolutely knackered. Anyway, bless my mom or our mom. Um, but she sort of went, what's all the commotion going on down there? And it's like, it's fine, mum, it's fine. I'm going to bed. We're going back to bed. We're I'm just checking my tackle like, with at, my at brother. The age, yeah. At the age of, at the age of 20, 26 <laughs> and 25, and we're, we're still, Comparing we're still getting bollocks. told to go to bed by our <laughs> yeah, mum. By your mom, yeah, by your mum, I love this. Um, but bless her. And, and actually, I'd, I'd, I'd moved out of home at the ripe old age of like 19, and I'd then come back home. And it was the worst thing in the world because once you move out of ha- home, you never want to go back. Um, yeah. So I had a year back there whilst my house was being built, and it was, um, yeah, it was, it was a roller coaster to be honest. Yeah, that yeah. was um, the start of I the road. I did literally. Did you? Just, what happened the next day? You literally went for a checkup. I, well, I, I, I had literally just met, who is now my girlfriend of five six years shout Olivia. out to Libby Ram uh, yeah Olivia, she's she's um she's my absolute rock um and 
Oh, that was cute, wasn't it, Rob? Yeah, hang on, hang on, because I'll start, <laughs> I'll start choking <laughs> up in a minute if, you, if we go Charlie, too deep with this. Tell me when we can cut this out, please. <laughs> yeah. yes. um, but she has been, and I say that because we, we actually met at the, at the Cheltenham races. I, was, I had a great day, absolute belting day um, <laughs> on the horses, and that's another great passion of ours is national hunt racing. So... Um, w I went for my check in the December um, and got diagnosed after seeing my first doctor and he sort of thought it was a cyst and I said, do you mind if we have a secondary, secondary opinion? And so I went for that and I got, um, I got diagnosed with um, testicular cancer. Uh, and, and you were 25? Yeah. Jesus. Um, so... But his jokes aside, it's meant, you know, what it is, it's crazy, and it's actually crazy how it happened. And, and sort of, if my brother hadn't done what he did, I still would be in the dark about it. I would have thought, would you really? Because I don't know quite. I mean, Oddballs, great supporters yeah, amazing, of myself, yeah, amazing charity, and, and yeah. I support them hugely. Yeah. And I've got the boxes on now. I've, I, I even for every white bird shot on our estates, I give whoever shoots it a oddballs pair of boxer shorts yeah, if yeah, their yeah. donation's big enough. Um, and apart from probably seeing them, sort of hindsight, thinking back, yeah, if your brother didn't I go don't on. think I would have checked. No. And, um, and, and fair play to what oddballs are doing is great. They're doing going, some wonderful... They are doing friend of mine cycled stuff. across America. Um, four oddballs. Yeah. Yeah. So um, quite heavily into like rugby, aren't they? They are Big massive. Yeah. More, more rugby than anything, but yeah. they are the England cricket boys. They're just becoming right. sort of more more established with oddballs as well, and yeah. oddballs are becoming more established with those, I suppose. Um, so I I got diagnosed in the December. Um, in the January, I I believe it was like the 25th or the 27th. Um, I had the removal. Um, and on the day of the removal, we'd got a shoot day running. I had to be in hospital by 8 a.m. Um, my my uh, surgery was at 10. I know that we shoot the quarry drive at war, sort of between 12 and 1. So I, I asked my surgeon if we could be out in time for, to, to watch that. So it's an hour's drive. And he... Um, he, he sort of said, yeah, yeah, let's, once you come out, make sure you eat and drink and then we can get you out as quick as possible. I was like, brilliant. Unknown to Olivia and my mum, I'd stuffed a radio underneath all my stuff and wrapped it up in, in a pair of boxer shorts in my bag. So when we got within range on the way home, I turned my radio on <laughs> right there, just lining <laughs> out, mum, dry faster. <laughs> fresh, <laughs> fresh off an yeah, operation. Literally, fr literally as fresh. And, and I, I was still so high on all the drugs that no plane had got to me yet. Yeah. And uh, we went and watched the quarry drive and my uncle was running the day and I just felt that one, two and three hadn't quite had enough. And he was just about to pull a drive at the back end of January. And I was like, don't you dare. <laughs> and, uh, and, and he, what the hell are you doing here? And I said, I've just come to watch. He's like, you've just come out of a cancer operation. And I was like, it's fine. Um, <laughs> and, and so it's quite a cool story. Can't keep um, away. I couldn't. And, um, and then I shot Middle Hill the day after, um, which is over by Broadway. Um, that was pretty difficult. That was a lot of sit-down shooting. I, I had no, no, no rotation in my midriff, I can tell Jesus. you that. Um, and then it snowed for our beaters day at home. So I drove again, drove my uncle's Range Rover around and just kept sliding off the um, off the driver's seat to shoot. And mm. and uh, bless my old buddy, uh, Charlie Gilder. He brought his Can-Am buggy across and the places where a Range Rover couldn't get. He got me, um, carried all my kit and actually carried me at some point. So <laughs> um, we, we yeah, it was a, it was a thing bit of a roller coaster. At that age, yeah. Uh, and, and it was a year, uh, sort of like the year after taking on the business. So it was hard mm. and it's put my sort of perspective on life and my outlook on life is completely different to what it once was. Yeah, I bet. Uh, and just sort of wanting to do things like I spent a lot of time shooting. My father was sort of like, you've got a business now stop spending all your money on shooting and it was sort of like one life i would i would sneak off on a day and go shooting and try and get sort of back to my house and put all my kit away without my dad knowing but the overnight stays when shooting the brigands was quite difficult to uh, <laughs> pass and now 
rather than before where dad would say why why have you gone and spent that money on that day shooting to now he goes so how was that day shooting because his perspective on it all has completely changed yeah, and one life and live it yeah. it is and y now he's he's coming shooting with me a bit more I which i really it. enjoy yeah and he came, uh, he came to upward on the grouse wasn't he he did and he hadn't shot grouse he loved it or been on the grouse i should say for for many many years so uh it's quite scary isn't it at that age you know yeah it puts life yeah. in perspective doesn't it, it does, like yeah. anything can happen it massively does. and, 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 it, and what's important what's nowadays is we all now at least we now we all talk about it don't we whereas in the old days you didn't or you wouldn't you have know, ashamed no. and and, and well, in the old it. days you'd feel a lump on your bollock and think nothing of it no like, my, i let all my mates feel the lump just so they knew what they were looking so for. Fed fed on, I'll tell you a good. That's that video we we're on about. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is it? So, we, so I had a mate um, from up in Driffield in East Yorkshire, and he um, he had testicular cancer as well. Anyway, he he had his taken out, and then he was a big rugby playing lad. And we were all at Harper Adams played rugby together so we uh we had a charity rugby match with him and it was quite funny because we up at wensleydale yeah uh, but Leyburn, wensleydale rugby club and of course with a few of the lads used to come shooting here paul saki was one of them oh, so yeah. i said to saki and funny enough haskell came up but i said not this time but i said to sax sax will you do me a favor and come up and play rugby for us in this charity rugby match and nobby was this lad <laughs> who had the cancer and Paul Saki, uh, former england uh, winger, winger. winger. Saki's is like yeah yeah, yeah yeah rob i'll come up yeah no problem at all so Saki would come up of course came up on the train would pick him up go to wensleydale rugby club and we we're like all load of old veterans <laughs> playing well this is actually probably what vets there were like i know 30 and we were playing and we all tried training it was all fine and Wednesday, we're right up for it, apart from this England international winger. And then we also had a great man called Lee Dixon, who was a scrum half for England and Northampton. And Dicker was playing <laughs> for us. And our whole game plan was, right, we all got ball. in a huddle. We got in a huddle. It was like, first of all, get the ball to Dicko. Dicko will get it to Saki and we'll score. That's it. <laughs> Everybody else is cut out. Yeah, but we're all in this huddle. And I was like, right, just to realise, a lot of us haven't been playing rugby now. I was like, Nobby, um, can you just drop your strides, please? I want to check that you've only got one bollock there before I put my life on the line for you. <laughs> <laughs> to play that. And literally, Paul had to drop his strides. It was like, is everyone happy now? Yeah, put them back up. Okay, we'll all go and play for you now. It's this charity rugby game. It was, it was brilliant. Making that sure he's not proud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was quite that funny. fantastic. Yeah, yeah. And then so, obviously led the, uh, after that was the BBC documentary, which yeah, so went mental, didn't it? Well, well that was it. We, um, we sort of, that th th this the way it all came out you know with chris going and doing his live examination to and me finding a lump brother. it was like what the heck yeah. is going on and it's an amazing story isn't it his brother goes on itv this morning i know he comes he checked home, over checks live on telly and then his and brother then realizes I he's got diagnosed it. which in some ways makes it very powerful doesn't it because it shows it's so real and and how close it can be to home without you yeah. even knowing yeah. uh is is the biggest yeah, thing yeah it's unbelievable um, so um yeah the, re the reason why i look so tired today is because of it all still you i don't still have side way. effects and and you i feel tired quite a lot um i'm on a lot of medication i try and still take, now yeah still now um so straight after the op um i suffer quite badly with testosterone deficiency right which, in actual fact, again, hindsight's a wonderful thing. Maybe a year, 16 months leading up to finding the cancer, I was constantly tired. I constantly couldn't get out of bed in the morning. Like, you know, alarm clock goes half past six, quarter to seven. No, snooze, snooze, snooze. And I was snoozing it a lot. Wow. And that may have been the start of it. My testosterone was it to an over mole, which is what it's measured in. For a 25 year old lad, it should be 22, 23. Mine was at the age of like a nine, uh, 119 year old man. Good that was your testosterone that level? That was my testosterone level. So now do you, you're, <coughs> do you on medication to, te to boost your testosterone? To just, just to keep my testosterone running where it should is what we're on the medication for. And then I'm taking a lot of vitamins to try and help me help me stay on track, but I have my bad days yeah. where I just am so tired and just have no drive. And there will be teams which come to me on shoot days and I will be 
in like a mopey mode and I understand that I cannot be in that mode because you've got to be on your A game in this job every time when you're when you're a host you've got to host and you've got to have that smile on your they face expect because the smiley happy burn every single every time every single time and times out those time. that know me know when I'm having a steady day yeah. and know when I'm having a slow day um, and they don't expect any more because they understand but I'm not trying to get a sympathy vote no, here, no, but um in fairness mate it's quite a good one for a sympathy vote can i just it, say it yeah. is it is <laughs> as far as sympathy, sympathy vote, vote goes that's a good one gonna pull yeah. any card yeah. out, mate. i've it. got so a hangover any, all these other things any are pretty poor teams looking straight down the lens any future yeah. teams if you come out and yeah. i'm tired just yeah. just turn around and go home yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he still wants pain yeah because yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. his fault yeah exactly uh but no it's um so yeah we we filmed a bbc documentary which blew up. Um, we never ever thought we'd have the nine o'clock slot on BBC One. We oh. didn't think it was, you know, ever going to be to 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 that sort of stamp. You see, I remember uh, I didn't know you at all at this point. How many years ago is that? Um, so that would be that would be sort of like. Well, when four? the documentary came out, yeah, like four, because it, it was sort of like the whole process yeah. of the operation. Um, and I was so gutted uh, because I'd actually given them full permission to come in on the operation. But there was one person in the in the surgery room which wouldn't. And it and granted, it's a big job, the anaesthetist's job of keeping keeping everything level. Um, and, and I was gutted when they couldn't come in, but they filmed absolutely everything yeah. else. Really? I remember watching um, it. I have seen it. Evie... My, now fiance, where I would watch Love Island and I you know, guilty little pleasure every now and again I'd watch it with her. And actually Chrissy's series was the best series, I think. Without doubt. Which and, means um, you've not watched, been which biased. means you've watched all the He's other series. As well, Genuinely yeah. haven't, but yeah. that was really good. Yeah. And uh, yeah, this documentary was coming on and Evie sort of stuck it on the TV. And I'm watching this and there's scenes of a farm and then there's like there's no pheasant rearing stuff shown, but there's like a game feeder in the corner. Then there'd be like a hopper, a game hopper, and then a, then like a pheasant pen. And I'm thinking, this boy's into shooting, but they can't show shooting. I know, and I didn't have yeah. a clue who he was at the time. And now we're really good friends. Well, and that's it. We 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 had to be a, a little bit PG careful, um, and a, a little bit PG. That in 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 for all intents and purposes, we were still a farm um, and. Chris made out that he was a farmer, which is an absolute load of rubbish. Um, <laughs> I I don't think that boy ever lambed a you. Really? In in, in what does he do? Time. Chris just does a lot of TV work now, he? so he still works for ITV. Um, does the racing, um, and and does does many other jobs. Yeah. Um, so keeping himself relevant and it's, it, it's yeah. great. Um, he's doing really well. Is Chris into shooting? No, 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 not in the slightest. Um, he'll he'll come and shoot a few clays if we've got the trap out, yeah. um, and claim that he's the best shot. But that's that's just Chris, Fair you enough. know. Um, and and granted, he can he can actually handle himself because it's a natural hand-eye coordination. He um, both he and I growing up, and our parents, crikey me, the the amount of miles that those guys put in um, during the during the summer. Uh, we were both county cricket, so um, mum could be going oh my, north, yeah, just dad could be going south, and and one of the, us just would relentless. be with it was yeah. honestly yeah. relentless miles. Um, <laughs> it, I dread the thing. You've got all miles, that to call with your girl, yes, right? yeah. miles and miles and miles, and then in the winter for football, Chris was going one way, I was going the other, right. and it was just mad. Um, and Chris then backed off the cricket, whereas cricket was my passion. Um, and started playing football in quite a big way. So he was in the Swindon Academy um, and, and unfortunately then suffered a really bad knee injury, um, which he still blames me for. Um, <laughs> but we won't, we won't go into that too much um, and, and had to give up, give up yeah. football. So mm. then... Um, and are you still playing cricket? No, I gave up cricket at the age of 17. I was yeah. still county cricket, Gloucestershire County cricket yeah. at the age of 17, gave it up for gamekeeping. Did you really? Yes, I did. And am I gutted a little bit? Because <laughs> I feel that I could be on some of the England tours with those guys. But hey, let's let's not worry about that because yeah. uh, I love what I do now. And I wouldn't I would not change it for the world. Um, and 
life has taught me a lot and cancer's <laughs> taught me a lot and mm. all of that stuff. So, you know, the documentary went huge. Off the back of that, we, we got, Chris and I got a few jobs together um, with doing other things. And the people that I've met along the way is just ridiculous. Yeah. Um, some of the people that I met on the documentary, like, oh my God, like those people are, you, you know. You realize what people are going through. Holy moly. Yeah. yeah. And when I, 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 did, um, I did a bit with um, Julia Bradbury. She's a sweetheart, isn't she? She's yeah. lovely. She's yeah. absolutely lovely. And like with her breast cancer, my testicular cancer, we, we had four or five of us in a room and we were just talking about our cancers. And I, I kind of went a bit quiet because I've not had it as bad as them. No. And that was hard. Yeah. Good mm. <laughs> agree. Um, oh. And she told me, she said, don't you dare <laughs> um, think that you've had it less than us. So, yeah, good. Thanks for sharing your story with us, Ben. Sorry to Get make you emotional. emotional. I know. <laughs> say that, mate. It'll make me emotional. Um, it's no, quite it, a... Look, it's, it, it's just good that you can talk about it, isn't know, it? Especially at your yeah, age. Yeah, definitely. And, and that's what it's all about, though, is getting the story out there. Yeah. Mm. Good for you. Well done. Yeah. Oh, for God's sake, don't both of <laughs> you start crying. No, 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 no. I mean, right, go, go, let's go back to shooting. Yeah. Well, 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 we have to, because yeah, we've got to start <laughs> blowing up. Because you know, <laughs> either that or we'll get our knackers out here and now. Do you know what I mean? I mean we've got one or the other to work on, yeah. haven't we? Charlie, have you got any tissues? Yeah. <laughs> Charlie, what are we going to do with these two? I know, it's great for the pod, though. Um, but it's <laughs> great for the pod. Joke, Look, I, joking it's, aside, no, though, you, mate, know, it's, you, have to, you have to talk about it. And, and like, if, if anybody who sees the podcast... I feel like I've gone really hot and my jacket's not on. Um, <laughs> That's emotions, but, mate. I know. But if anyone wants to go and watch that documentary, it's called Me, My Brother and Our Balls. Um, and I think it's, I believe it's still on BBC Is it? there. I'm going to go um, watch it's it. It's got yeah. millions and millions of views. So, and, and. Do the they initial, actually ever tell, I've always wondered, do they ever tell you the actual view count? Um, we, we can actually get the viewing ratings from the BBC, um, which Chris and I, haven't bothered for no, ages. Well, like for the, the initial few months, it was like, oh my God, are you joking? Millions. Yeah, um, yeah millions. Like, yeah. Where it went out on BBC One at like, nine o'clock. So it's yeah. like your, your prime, time. Your prime, prime spot. Yeah. And, and even that night, it w we're talking like tens of millions. And it's just like, it's absolutely mad. Yeah. Um, I'm amazed because it wasn't the BBC when they realised you like shooting. They sort of, that's it, cut it off. Do well, you know I had to well, be really rid of it. I bet I you did. I had to be really careful because... You didn't post I, like shooting on social I, media for years, I didn't did know. you? Um, because it, it's a passion. Shooting's a passion of mine, but also I wanted to help everyone as, as far and wide as what I possibly could yeah. um, to understand it to realize that there's loads of people out there that can help you when you get into that whole journey. Um, so yeah, it was, um, yeah, it was, it's one of those things which just wanted to help people. Well done. Um, Good and well, the, the, the shooting got put on the back burner a little bit because of, as we all know, how, how one sided the story is with the mm. BBC. So I had to be very careful when yeah. going into the, see the BBC commissioners and going to the top floor. And when you get asked to go to the top floor, that's like a pretty big deal. Yeah. I bet. And, um, it was like, hopefully Mr. Packham isn't in <laughs> today. Could you imagine? Walking in in full camo with a <laughs> cartridge bag over your shoulder. Exactly. No, that's class, yeah. mate. And thanks for sharing the story with us because it's, okay. um, well, that's you didn't right. have to, but it was nice. Um, back on to Brimsfield, obviously, big, big season ahead, your second season in ownership. Sell, selling well already. Yeah. Book on, you know, you can get in touch with Ben via Brewing well, Game yeah, Supplies. Brewing Game. We'll pop yeah. it all up here. Yeah, we're, we'll we'll get it on the bottom of and the pod, I guess. Shoot. Have you you've been here? Yeah, yeah. It's um, a lo I've known it for years. It is a lovely it's a it's lovely part of the world. It's just a lovely yeah. estate. It's just a cracking place. And as far as media coverage this season, mate, you've been a busy boy. I think every person that's owned a YouTube channel, including my fiance, <laughs> has put Brimsfield Park on there at <laughs> some know. point. I know Johnny Crikey, it's cost me some money. That's <laughs> I bet it has, yeah. Feels for, yeah, it's, it's I, ASO, and it, it's, it's done. It, well, you've sort of had to burst onto the scene, haven't I you? I had, I had to, had to try and hit the ground running slightly. Um, and we had only sold a sort of so, so the sort of time scale, I suppose, if you want to put it like that, of 
we took the lease on, my keeper started on June the 1st. The first pulp touched down on the 5th of July, I believe. The first shoot day was at the end of September. And we were sort of going in with a, a blank canvas. No game covers were drilled. Wow. No nothing, yeah. you know? And we wanted to do, so, I wanted to do so much. Yeah. And our ideas of making pens bigger, so we were like on that straight away. So all my time and effort got put into Brimsfield along with um, my keepers as well. And, and without trying to leave sort of home behind. But home has just been one of those shoots that from when I set it up, it's just progressed from strength to strength. It does and, what and it the does. Year, yeah, yeah, exactly. The year after COVID, I wasn't one of these people that wanted to leave my clients in the lurch that they are not going to get their shoot day. So I honoured them the year after. And I'd got another estate really? called Withington. And, and that was a hard estate. That was a really hard and tricky estate because the owner wouldn't let me do what I wanted or needed to do to make it a very successful game shoot. So... I actually pulled away in the last season that I had it in my lease and pulled all my days back home. So home did 63 days that year Mad. of just constant pushing and sort of the local village were a bit peeved off with me with the with the noise disturbance, which I, I can see I get, um, yeah. and I get it. I get it. Um, and I don't want to be to this place. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't want to like be that person. Yeah, it? I, <laughs> I don't want to be that person yeah. which upsets any, anyone. Yeah. But when you've got a successful business, which is in the shooting industry, you can't help the bangs. Um, so then the last sort of packing down Withington and I was thinking, how do I go about this? I want to rear a few more. Um, Archie at Brimsfield had got the sheds for sale. So I went over there made a handshake on the sheds and said what's happening with the shoot and that's how it all came Absolutely, about yeah. sort of thing so so we started talking at the end of february and just brainstorming things rather than anything else and having a conversation and then it all came about like actually yeah we could probably make this good work for you. so so that was really good so we've we've still got four years left on this first lease um mm. and who would and you say throughout everybody that's gone through brimsfield's doors the best shot this season the best pheasant or whatever you've seen shot at Brunchfield, who was the man behind? Or the um, lady behind the gun? Best bird shot at Brimsfield. God, I don't know. There's or been the best so shot many. you've seen in the field this season. No matter, at Brimsfield or whatever. Um, Graham Cherry shot well when he came to Brimsfield, who's a friend of mine. Um, and... I saw Giles Cadman shoot a couple of absolute monsters. No, he's a good mm. shot. Um, Giles is a good shot. He is, yeah. Yeah, yeah he's a good shot. Um, yeah. Giles was on our syndicate, so um, sort of, I, I mean, Dave shot some crackers on, on the day when he came. Um, Dean, Dean shot some yes. crackers on the day he came. Johnny, Johnny managed to get one. <laughs> um, and, uh, a few of them beat me, I must say. A few of them beat me, but I shot pretty straight. You did all right. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, Crofty shot a couple of nice ones on, whoa, 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 on, steady, on my birthday. Steady. We're not, yeah, no, we're not like, thank I'm God not, we can I'm, edit this. That I has know. to come out, Charlie. No, there's always leave it, leave it we in. Can it, might never... just, it might just keep me a nice nice day somewhere. Really? Um, yeah, oh, yeah, good point. Good um, point. So leave that in, please. Thank you, Charlie. Um, <laughs> and, well, yeah. Uh, but it's hard to say. It's hard to say. Like, there's been some mega bird shot on both the estates this season everything's flown really nicely i'm really excited for next season we've got the diary filling up fast good for you we went into brimsfield and, and had only sold like i said earlier 15 days up to september and i needed to turn that round um so probably by putting four of my own guest days in probably wasn't the way of going because that actually cost me money. But it won't do in the long it run, mate. Was, it was good to show people Brimsfield. And in the end, we did, like I said, right at the start of this podcast, I think we did 52 or 54 days well um, in total. Um, and that's not including Beater's Day. Um, and they had a belting day too. So we've, we've had a really, really nice season, a successful season. Um, the accountant told me yesterday that it's gone quite well. So I'm happy. He's told me I need a PA to keep on top of everything. So that's the next advert mm. going out. Oh and, gosh. and the mix about of keepers uh, this year with, with guys going, guys coming in. Um, 
it's uh, it, it, there's another another interview that I've got to do for a PA. Well done. Hopefully, so uh, any of you want a PA job, just give me a shout. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> very Perfect. very very laid back person to work for. If I was any more laid back, I'd be on my ass. But well, that'll we do entirely. Um, and thank you very yeah. much for coming on the pod. Thank you, mate. We, we could sit here and talk for a hell of a lot longer. We could, and we might have to do a rerun with me and Croft and, and, and Rob as well. Just well, yeah, bit. yeah. get the three musketeers we'll uh, get, back yeah. together but because that... Um, yeah, we're a bit short of time today, sadly. But that was, fun. that was ace. Thanks, mate. That was ace. Hey, thank well thanks for coming. And good luck with everything. Good luck with it all, yeah. yeah if you want some shoot uh, days at Brimsfield, give him a shout. If you want it, some chicks, give him a shout. If you want some feeders, give him a shout. Drinkers. Pults. <laughs> what else? He's another jack of all it, trades. Hit the, hit the minute Land Rovers <laughs> yeah. because that's <laughs> my drive's kind of full of those. Yeah, well discovery. Oh dear. Thank you. Thanks, no worries. Thank you very much.